Filament drying is a very important topic that we've visited multiple times on this channel. It doesn't matter how dialed in your printer and slicer settings are if you're battling with moisture in your materials. My primary dryer recommendations for the past two years have been the Ibis Ease Dry and their larger Cyclops. Those are the main units I personally use and they've performed better than the others I've tested. A couple of months back, Ibis let me know they were releasing a brand new filament dryer called the Polyphemus and asked if I was interested in testing it. The details were somewhat vague, but based on my experience with their existing dryers and the two year gap between the previous release, I was excited to see what it offered and agreed. Well, I've had this dryer for a couple of weeks now and I've had some time to play around with it and see what it's all about. In today's video, we'll take a look at what this new dryer offers, how it compares to their other units, and I'll give you my overall thoughts based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. With over a decade of experience, PCBWay offers reliable, high quality PCB prototyping and fabrication with super fast turnaround times. Bring your projects to life with CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. I recently ordered 20 PCBs to use for an upcoming Nerf inspired blaster project that I've been wanting to build for years. With as few as 5 and as many as 10,000 board order quantities, PCBWay has you covered for any project, big or small. Use the link in the description to get a $5 credit towards your first order today. Jumping right in, setting up the Polyphemus is simple but does require some assembly for the top cover. Unlike the Cyclops, which uses a single piece of curved acrylic, this dryer uses five acrylic panels that are sandwiched between a top and bottom frame with four corner pieces. To assemble, you place the four corners onto the bottom frame, slide the acrylic into each side, and then attach the top frame, acrylic, and handle. This is secured with 10 screws, which helps to pull everything together. My only nitpick is with the included handle that's made of two halves that are held together with small screws. It's functional, but it feels a little flimsy to me. I ended up taking measurements from it and making a single body 3D printable version that I like better and I'll have it linked in the description for anyone interested. Once the top cover is assembled, the dryer is ready to be used. The base of the dryer has a PTC heater, fan for helping move the heat through the unit, and a small stepper motor to rotate the spools, which we'll touch a bit more on shortly. There are two compartments that can be used to hold desiccant if you plan on storing filament in the dryer when not in use. Maybe a small detail, but I do like that the rollers are secured in place on this dryer. On the Cyclops, I had a few instances where the rollers or their bearings fell out of their slots. Although the heater is in the very center of the dryer, there's a plate that goes over it which forces the air out the front and back, directing it right to where the spool of filament sits. The temperature and humidity sensor is located at the front center of the unit. Interfacing with the dryer is done using six buttons on the front of the unit and its built-in screen. Pressing the option button and using the arrows lets you cycle through the 12 material presets. Nine of them are named for various filament types and then there is M1 through M3. Although the presets have settings already, they are fully customizable. The temperature can be adjusted from 20 to 70 Celsius, there are three levels of heating, and dry time has a minimum of 30 minutes with a maximum of 24 hours or permanently on. Originally, I thought the heating levels maybe adjusted the internal fan, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I believe it affects how much power is sent to the internal heater. Based on the included manual, for 50 Celsius and below, the lowest level is recommended, and above 60 Celsius, the highest level should be used. You can switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit by holding down the settings gear for 3 seconds. Continually holding down the power button will reset the unit to factory defaults. Pressing the power button once will put it into a different mode where the current humidity is displayed and you can set a target humidity level. The unit will power on until that target level has been reached and then it will power on and off as needed to maintain that humidity. The included guide has a table that includes most filaments and the recommended parameters which is nice to have as a reference. One fairly unique element of this dryer is the 360 degree rotation. Pressing the 360 button activates this feature and the small internal stepper will begin to rotate the filament every couple of seconds. The theory behind this is that it helps to evenly warm the filament so that the entire spool equally dries versus the section near the heater drying quicker than the rest. I can appreciate the concept, but I have my reservations. The first thing I notice when activating the rotation is the added noise caused by that motor. I kept this heater in my studio with me and I didn't mind the fan noise, but I found the stepper noise to be pretty annoying. 
IBIS told me that the noise in the gearbox will decrease over time, so maybe I just need to put it into a closet and get it past its break-in period, but that is still to be determined. The unit came with a spare motor, and the manual I received says that the motor has a 1500 hour lifespan. For anyone wondering, that is approximately two months if you ran the unit with the rotation non-stop. IBIS told me in an email that they have these motors running much, much longer than that, but all I really have to go based off of is the data that's provided in the manual and on the product page. I was also informed that these motors will be available for separate purchase, but at the time of recording, they are not yet posted on the website. I don't doubt that rotating the spool can help to speed up the initial removal of moisture, but I've been running filament dryers for the past at least five to six years, and none of them have had that feature, and they have done a great job. The top cover has a vent that can be opened when running the heater and closed if you plan to store filament for an extended time inside. The unit itself isn't airtight since it doesn't have a gasket or some form of insulation, so I'm not really sure how effective that vent is. For feeding filament directly out of the unit into your printer, there are three openings in the front, three on top, and two on the back. There are also small plugs included to seal the top openings if you are not actively using them. The Polyphemus can hold two spools of filament at a time up to 210 millimeters tall by 80 millimeters wide, or a single spool that's up to that same 210 millimeters tall but up to 170 millimeters wide. There is an expansion kit available that extends the top cover of the dryer. The expansion is basically a smaller version of the top cover that uses four long screws to attach the two together. I discovered that the corner pieces in my expansion kit were too long for the included screws, and since the M3 screws were much longer than anything I had, I ended up modeling up my own corner pieces. They are just about identical to the stock ones, but I shortened them a few millimeters so that I could use these screws that were included in this kit. I contacted IBIS about this and they apologized, explaining that this was an issue with a few of the earlier units and that it is something that they have since corrected. They also told me that they plan to have some printable parts released as well, like the handle and some of the expansion stuff, but again, I'll at least have the things that I've created linked in the description below in case anybody wants to use them. With the extender, the max spool size you can use is 250 millimeters wide by 170 millimeters tall. I was really hoping I was going to be able to use this with my large IC3D spools, but they are still just a bit too tall. Just like we did with the Sunlu and EaseDry video, I cut a piece of sponge in half so that both pieces weighed 5 grams. I then soaked them in water and weighed them at 23 grams each. I set one in each of the dryers and turned them on at 70 Celsius. For the Cyclops, since the heating element is dead center and open, I didn't want to place the sponge directly on it, so I set it right beside it. I came back roughly 2 hours and 15 minutes later and weighed both again. The Polyphemus sponge was back at 5 grams, while the Cyclops bounced between 6 and 7. Looking at the two, you could still see some moisture in the sponge on the Cyclops, while the other sponge was completely shriveled from all of the moisture being pulled out of it. Of course, this test doesn't take into consideration the potential added benefit of having the rotation function. Also, I was actually expecting this to take quite a bit longer than 2 hours and 15 minutes, so I don't know exactly how far in advance the Polyphemus was able to completely dry out that sponge. That being said, up until this, the Cyclops has been my best performing dryer, and I would say the Polyphemus is at least on par with it, if not slightly better. So after putting this unit together, running a few tests, and drying out a couple spools of filament, what are my thoughts as of now on Polyphemus? Honestly, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I can appreciate IBIS wanting to think outside the box, but I'm not sure I see this as a big improvement over the existing Cyclops. I actually like the unibody top cover of the Cyclops better than the one on the Polyphemus, and that there is no assembly required. The biggest improvements I feel that the Polyphemus offers are improved flow and direction of the air coming in, along with the added features built into the control panel. There are a ton of preset options, and the humidity mode, although more of a bonus, is a neat add. If you're in the market for a filament dryer and want one that can work with multiple spools or even bigger spools, I do think that the Polyphemus is a solid option. However, if you already have a larger unit or something like the Cyclops, I don't see a big enough reason to justify an upgrade. If you only need to dry out 1kg spools and you don't care about doing multiple at the same time, the Ease Dry from IBIS is still the one I swear by and probably the one I find myself using the most. At under half the cost, you can even get two of the Ease Dry units for less than the price of the Cyclops or the Polyphemus. 
And that has been the Ibis Polyphemus dryer. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions that you maybe had about this dryer. If there's anything I didn't cover that you still have questions about, please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. As always, if I don't know the answer to your questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get those answers for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Diana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.